Hi Player 2, I'm Amy Does Things, and you may not believe it from the background of some of my videos, but I love to clean and tidy. So in Kate's Adventures Asked Us All for Cleaning Tips the other day, I thought I'd share how I went from a tidy phobic hoarder to an uber productive clean freak. And it's all because I was doing it wrong. My idea of tidying was going around hiding things, shoving things out of sight or into drawers. And that's fine if you know what you have and where it is and you have adequate storage, but if you need a clear out, you need to start from the bottom up. And that's why this method is so satisfying and relieves so much stress. It leaves no stone unturned and it's really cathartic. The one issue is it will make a much, much bigger mess while you're doing it. I first did this when I was 16 and my parents thought that I had gone insane and didn't believe that I was actually tidying. But the results are undeniable and I have never looked back. I recommend you dust the ceiling and the walls as step zero, but the first official step is to pick one small area. By way of an example, I'm going to use this drawer. But typically, I'd recommend one set of bookshelves or one set of drawers, a table, one clothes rack, your desk, under your bed, etc. Then what you need to do is take absolutely everything off it and out from inside it and put it all on the floor. In short, to tidy up effectively, you need to make a massive, massive mess. If you're doing a clean as well as a tidy, you can now wipe down your desk very easily, dust the bookshelves, or change your sheets and flip the mattress over. And I do recommend this because it's spring, so why the hell not? And if you're not watching this in spring, you're not off the hook either, I have my eye on you. If you're the sort of person who likes making lists, or you need an inventory for insurance purposes, or because you're clearing out a work area for example, you can make a list of everything in this pile that you're keeping. I normally use Workflowy for this, as I've mentioned in my writing methods video, and this is obviously not sponsored because sponsors tend to prefer 1 million subscribers who follow the crowd than 100 or so who are really engaged with the content. But I don't. Now it's the fun part, where you separate everything out and categorise it. Litter is the most obvious. Used tissues, sweet wrappers, fossilised receipts, all of these things can either go in a pile to go in the bin, or if you have a lightweight paper bin to hand, they can go right in there. And of course, anything recyclable should go in a separate pile for recycling. As you're weeding out the litter, and the things you straight up don't need anymore, you can categorise things by type or use as you go. This is useful for three reasons. One, it helps you to know what you have. You may think you don't have any pencil sharpeners, but soon realise you actually have two and you don't need to think about buying anymore. Two, it's always a good idea to keep similar items in the same place anyway, so that you always know where they'll be. If I'm tidying for somebody else, I will always be asking questions like, where do the pens live? And three, once you've completed this process on every area of the room that you're tidying, you'll be able to see at a glance exactly how much stationery, for example, you have, and therefore how much storage you need to buy to put it in and declutter, or conversely how many of your existing storage units you can give away to charity. It's also a very good idea to test and sort through things which are relevant to that area, i.e. will be staying in those drawers or at that desk as you go along. The point of this method is that by the end of your tidying session, one area of the room will be completely spotless, clean, tidy, ready to use. So while tidying your desk, for example, check your pens, and if they're empty, get rid of them. Same goes for batteries, makeup, and your still beating human heart. It's the smart move. When you finish this, you will have piles of litter, easy to deal with, perhaps a pile to give to charity, feel free to set that aside for now, and piles of things like stationery, books, letters and documents, and everyone's favourite category, miscellaneous. If the area you've tidied was your desk, you can now put all of the pens in the pot, shred any junk mail, and pop any important documents in your inbox, because that counts as a whole section on its own and you deserve a break for now. And you can go and put any books you found on your bookshelf or near that area if there's no space on it for when you do tidy it. If you've been tidying your bookshelves, you can pop the books you're keeping up there, categorising them as you like as you go, but you can drop any pens you find while doing that on your desk and you don't have to test them until you tidy that area of the room. What you should have now is one area of the room that is completely tidy and has everything in its right place like that song in Vanilla Sky, or a movie reference that's well-timed, relevant and not overly obscure. That's what it'd be called. If you find a pencil while tidying your sock drawer, you can pop it in a stationery pile to move to your desk. 
delegate it so that when you reach an area, you'll know that you have every single pen in your room when you reach the desk, or know that you're seeing all of your books when you're clearing your bookshelves. This kind of peace of mind is very satisfying. Everything will end up where it's supposed to be, and you won't lose anything, forget anything, or miss anything out. Now, there's probably a question on your lips, which is, what on earth do I do with the miscellaneous category? Well, by virtue of being in this category, we know it's not litter or anything you want to give away. That means it's likely to be decorative, geeky, or important to you, or some combination of the above. So what you should do is decorate your room with it. Because there's a difference between clutter, mess, and aesthetically pleasing clutter. Clutter is disorganised and isn't necessarily anything that you're likely to use. Mess is like clutter, but there's also likely to be litter, dirty laundry, or dirty dishes somewhere in there. But a little bit of nice clutter is like the set dressing that big movie studios pay big money to get right. Think about Bilbo Baggins' desk or Sherlock Holmes. There's no tissues or dirty dishes, just things like pens and other instruments they're likely to be using regularly. And as Einstein said, empty desk, empty mind. I really hope everyone watching can get something out of this video and implement some or all of this method to help tidy up. If you're struggling to get round to it, send me a tweet and I will hold you accountable. Feel free to send me before and after shots of your tidy or even progress shots to document exactly how many pens you have in your room, and I'll retweet or reblog or refine those as appropriate. And as always, please feel free to comment, especially if it's your first time joining me here, and I will reply or make a video response to share with me, which I won't share with anyone else if you don't want me to. If you like this video, feel free to share it with Anna Akana. I like Anna Akana. And until the next level, I'm Amy Does Things, and I can't wait to see what you do too. I hope you'll invite me to join your game as player 